Uh, when the word on uh, mentioned, uh, oh, excuse me, about the games, uh, he mentioned that you can have uh, specific match demands and self-appraisal. So essentially, this is this question here. Of, can we have too much homework? When you stated like, yeah, you want to know about the teams. Absolutely. You want to know about the teams you're about to officiate. But my question would be, is, can we do too much? And what type of homework should we do? Let me show you this wonderful study uh, by uh, Jones, Paul and Erskine in 2002. They took two groups of match officials and both groups watched exactly the same game of football. Group A were told that the blue team were a particularly aggressive team and the red team were not. The second group weren't told anything. They were just told to watch the game, tell us what decisions you'd make, how many, what cards you'd show and where. If we look at the light gray bars on the right of each label, we'll see that the group that are unaware of reputation, they actually felt that the number of cards they needed to show were pretty much equal for both teams. Whereas the dark gray bars, the group that were aware of the reputation, not only did they penalize the good team less severely, but they actually punished the aggressive team much more severely by showing many more cards. This would affect the consistency of our decision-making if we know too much about the teams. So it's not more really about how much we know, it's about what we know and how we're using that. These are about learning from mistakes. So. A lot of the stuff I've shown you, I've, I've given you reasons why I felt I've potentially got it right. These are about reasons that we've got it wrong, basically, and how you can learn from that, not beating yourself up too much. So how and why did we get to the decision we did? What were the comms? Sometimes we learn from painful episodes and what are the learning points. So it's dead easy to all sit here and say we all get it from right, but it's not the reality, is it? So. Um, and so and then we need to look at those individual guidelines of what you would do if you were dehydrated. Try, try and replenish about 150% of what you've lost. So if we take it back to the simplest way of looking at this, it's that's the amount of um, weight loss between uh, pre and post match. So make up 150% of that in, in the hours post game. Um, looking to replace any electrolyte loss or so sports drinks may be um, beneficial there. And again, keeping that body weight loss under 2%. Now, Millennium Magic was a weekend that was introduced in 2007 at Cardiff. And all six Super League games were played on one weekend over a Saturday and Sunday. And the last game of the weekend was Leeds against Bradford, which was a tremendous game. I was on the line for the game. Um, and unfortunately, I think there was two points in it with about 30 seconds to go. A ball came loose in the tackle and the video referee went against the policy, albeit there wasn't a, a policy in word, went against the process and came in in live play and made a decision. And he, he suggested to the referee that the play was offside and should, a penalty should be given. The referee, Steve Ganson, who is my current boss, gave the penalty. And it was only when they showed the replays that it was determined that clearly the video referee had got it wrong. We shouldn't have come in in live play and made that decision. Leeds elected to kick a penalty goal, which they successfully, well, they, they missed the penalty goal, it hit the upright and rebounded. And a Leeds player who chased up the missed penalty goal collected the ball and scored a try to win the game. Unfortunately, it was only at that stage or after the try had been awarded we then realised that that player who chased up the ball was actually offside from the from the penalty goal. So Millennium Magic became known as Millennium Tragic Weekend. Um, and it's always with these things in many ways that after the horses bolted, things changed. So after that, they then introduced a formal video referee policy, which is a written document and documents exactly how and how not the video referee system should work. I use this uh, slide just to kind of demonstrate uh, in terms of geography on the field. So, of course, what we're not saying here is that it's impossible to score from the red zone. 
because of course week in week out certainly at the elite level of the game we occasionally see goals being scored from this area what we are saying is the wider the angle the further away from goal the less obvious the goal scoring opportunity becomes not impossible but just the less obvious so we have to really factor this into our decision making when making dog so and non dog so style decisions so red zone it becomes less likely amber zone it increases the likelihood it increases the probability but what we're generally looking for in terms of direction is for that attacker to be in the green zone here heading towards the general direction of goal in that green area so remember red and amber not impossible just less likely and further upfield of course how far would we say is credible and non-credible between offense and goal in the penalty area no brainer in and around the penalty area no brainer the further away we go from goal the less likelihood there is of that immediate attacking opportunity that immediate goal scoring opportunity when the offense takes place look after the equipment you use obviously footwear is crucial um this is a podiatrist before the 2006 world cup talking to ashley about how or why he's getting this on his feet after every training session and these are the tools of your trade look after them because if they blister or they get painful um, they will affect your performance and that's really what i've come to share with you i just hope it's helped in some way i hope it's you know, I'd like to think that it's transferable into what you do and, um, you know, around, especially around the exercise and mental health, that resilience, that inner strength, that just never given up. Because I was a teacher. I'm now a chief executive of an all Wales charity with 12 members of staff, self-funded, but fundraising left, right and centre. And you can do anything. You know, my kids have no idea what they want to do. And I just told them I want them to be happy. And I want them to do what they want and anything is possible. And I really hope that by listening today that you'll realise that life can be so hard and so that you still can survive anything and come out stronger the other side. It's not about forgetting. It's not about getting over anything. It's just about being able to live life and appreciate what's around you. So this is my, my sixth take home message is that supplements can play a small role in athletic performance. The odd one, not as many as maybe social media would want you to think, but the odd one can help in the right situation after consultation with a sport nutrition expert. Most, however, are unnecessary and a waste of your hard-earned money. And even more worrying, could to contain enough prohibited substances to fail an anti-doping test, or uh, can contain things that are dangerous to your everyday health. If you're going to use supplements, choose one that are batch tested with companies such as Informed Sport. And when it comes to supplement, use the very minimum amount needed, and that will allow you to implement a safe strategy and to implement it well. Yeah, of course. Like referees are always going to make mistakes. I think I was playing a game, a game the other day, and the referee, like you know, I said in so many words that should have been a foul to us, and he said, "Yeah, I made a mistake there," and that was absolutely fine. I just literally just wiped that under the carpet because, you know, he admitted his fault. Everyone's human. Everyone makes mistakes, and then we can just we can just move on. I think, I think it's very refreshing for a referee to say when they make a mistake. It's the ones who are very arrogant who think they they haven't made a mistake and they're right and then they stick to that. I like the ones who can admit that they made a mistake there and then we can move on. Um, I feel that in this day and age, um, I feel like you can't say anything to the officials anymore. But of course, I think it has to be the respect as well from the players. They need to speak to the referees in a certain manner because, you know, I think it's, it's well documented that the officials in rugby get you know, they get a little bit more protection or there's a certain manner which I think football can do, you know, learn a lot from.